ارزونا 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 السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء وأسعد المرسلين نبينا وحبيبنا وشفيعنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين ربنا وسعت كل شيء رحمة وعلم فاغفر للذين تابوا واتبعوا سبيلك وقنا عذاب الجحيم اللهم آمين الحمد لله for being here tonight and mashallah perhaps the numbers aren't what they were yesterday or the day before Alhamdulillah who brought us here tonight Alhamdulillah who gave us life to hear these words Alhamdulillah the one who allowed us to be from the ummah of the best of creation Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam a wish that all the prophets had to meet this messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and we were such gifted that the first thing that we heard when we were born into this world was the name of Allah followed by his name, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And of course, the greatest of blessings is to know Allah, Rabbul Alameen, Jalla Dhikru Himself, to know His name, to say His name with ease. How many of Allah Ta'ala's creation live and die, but they don't raise their hands and say, Ya Allah, one time? Isn't it a gift? Is it not a gift? Wallahi, it's the greatest gift. Why did Allah Ta'ala choose us? to make sajda to him even while we're yawning subhanallah in our salah even while our mind is distracted and drunk with dunya while he ta'ala is giving us this gift every single day to stand in front of him and to speak to him why did he not take our souls when we knew his name we knew his prophet we knew his message and we still disobeyed him night day in and day out Allah ta'ala forgive us Ameen Allah ta'ala make us from his friends Ameen we've heard in this series subhanallah from the students of Sheikh Akasha, Hafidhahullah, the students of Al Hirz Institute, we've been hearing about the great book of the great Imam, Imam Al Shaltibi, Rahimahullah, and what an Imam he was. Subhanallah. And just hearing his story, I recall a year ago we heard his story sitting with Sheikh here, and Subhanallah, you go on and on about this Imam, and then imagine that this Imam, and even our own Sheikh, when we see them and the love that we feel and how awesome they are and, and the feeling in our hearts that we get of just true humility in front of them. Imagine they're just a fraction of a fraction of that great messenger, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah ta'ala allow us all to meet him while he is pleased with us. Allahumma ameen. We know that in this book we heard, subhanAllah, that the Imam speaks about the moment of our creation, of our birth actually. When he says, وَبَعْدُ فَحَبْلُ اللَّهِ فِينَا كِتَابُهُ Indirectly, the Imam is saying that from the moment that we left Alam Al-Arwah, the moment that we left the world of souls and we entered the womb of our mother, there was only one source of connecting to Allah, the greatest source of connecting to Allah, the rope of Allah Ta'ala, which was what? Kitabuhu. What's his kitab? Al-Qur'an. Now I want you to imagine just for a minute with me, this Qur'an changed the world, Wallahi. Didn't it? This Qur'an did not just give life to the desert, but it gave life to the world. And when you study history, it's only because of this book, because of the Kalam of Allah that He gifted to mankind, that He summarized all of revelation from the beginning of time until today. It's because of this that Europe was saved, and China was saved, and Africa was saved, and even North America was saved, wasn't it? Well, that's a different conversation for another day. It's a book in which even the enemies of the Prophet ﷺ would leave their beds to go and hear some of those words. Didn't Abu Jahl and Abu Sufyan catch each other outside of the house of Rasulullah ﷺ? Didn't they? What are you doing here? What are you doing here? SubhanAllah. Going to listen to Qur'an and their mushrikeen kuffar? What did Al-Walid ibn Mughira say Ahmed about this? Didn't he, didn't he praise the Qur'an? It's not the word of jinn, it's not the word of man. The height, of his, the height of it is branches giving fruits, and the lowest part is rivers flowing. It's the, not the word of man. It's Al-Walid Al-Mughiran. He's cursed in the, in the Kitab of Allah. SubhanAllah. But those of us who say that it's the greatest miracle, 
what have we done for the Qur'an? Imam al to be giving advice to his student Imam al sakhawi he says, Rahimahumullah, he says, Alam tara anna ad-deena yandubu ahlahu? Alam tara anna ad-deena yandubu ahlahu? Gharibaan, shadeedaan, wahidaan, duna sahibi. Alam tara anna ad-deena yandubu ahlahu? Gharibaan, shadeedaan, wahidaan, duna sahibi. He says, don't you see that this deen, by deen he means what? The two wahid that Allah Ta'ala sent, the Qur'an, which the entire month of Ramadan is celebrating, all these gifts that Allah Ta'ala gave us is because of what? Because on one of these nights, what happened? What happened? The Qur'an was revealed, isn't it? So Allah Ta'ala said, I free everyone's neck from the hellfire every night. SubhanAllah. Fasting your du'as are accepted. Fast every day and I'll give, forgive your sins. Stand at night, I'll forgive your sins. I'll lock up the devil for you. I'll open the gates of Jannah for you. I'll close the gates of Jahannam for you. Find Laylatul Qadr, I'll give you a lifetime of good deeds. Why did Allah Ta'ala do all of that? Because of what? Because he sowed love that night that he gave Qur'an to the world. SubhanAllah. So the Imam is saying, don't you see that this Qur'an and this deen, it sympathizes, it, it takes care of its people. And then he says, a stranger... A homeless person, isolated person, without any, without any companion, without any friend. Wallahi, without this book, where that description fits us. Without Qur'an, without this deen, what will we do with our lives? Although it's difficult to get up for Fajr, have you ever thought, what if there was no Fajr? What if we didn't wake up and think about Allah? What would our life be like? Have you ever thought of that? Those people that we mentioned that don't have the book of Allah, what is their life like? Allah keep us steadfast. Ameen. Wake up and go to sleep. No salah, no Quran. The Imam is saying this deen takes care of and it sympathizes and it mourns over its people. Even if they were who? Strangers, homeless, alone without any companions, the Quran would be sufficient for them. Without the Quran, you would be a stranger because you wouldn't know your purpose. You, don't, you wouldn't know where you're coming from, where you're going. You wouldn't know anything. And this is the state of every other person besides the Muslims. Isn't it? Who are Mark, Matthew, Luke, and John? Did the Christians know? No? <laughs> When's the last time they got up in the minbar and they said, and John, he said, Rahimahullah. Have they ever done that? Yes or no? No. <laughs> Subhanallah. What about the Jews and the Christians and the atheists? Have, do they have guidance? Do they know where they're going or do they make it up themselves, Ahmed? They make it up themselves. Right, Mustafa? Imagine a life like that. A complete stranger to the world. Not knowing what you're doing here. Sharidan, without a house. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that a believer who does not recite Qur'an is like an, is an abandoned home. It's a home without anything in it. With any good, without any goodness in it. Without any light in it. Without any barakah in it. Without any goodness in it. Isolated. Corrupted home. SubhanAllah. So it's like being homeless if you don't have Qur'an. Wahidan, by yourself. We learned in the, in, in the book of Imam Shatibi that the Qur'an will be with you from the time you're born until the time you die, even in the grave with you. Won't it be? And the day you stand in front of Allah, won't it be with you? Won't it stand with you? We hope that the Qur'an is a hujjah for us and not against us. Ameen. We hope that it's shafi'a for us and not against us. We ask Allah that on that day it actually comes to our aid. Allahumma ameen. And I want to conclude by saying this. There's a few stories that you know, I, I thought of before I got here and SubhanAllah, I'm not sure what to say sitting in the place with our, where our Shaykh sits. Allah preserve him. I mean, I feel like, I feel like I'm going to die. Allah keep us safe. I mean, and take our souls when he's pleased with us. I mean, today wasn't the best day. So make do I get another day to try again. I mean, you know, SubhanAllah, there was a woman that Ustadi Isa, he mentioned to us, 67 years old, on her deathbed and she took Shahada. She took shahada. Allah Ta'ala chose her and guided her. And she took shahada and on her deathbed she said to the people around her, Is that true about Qur'an? It's Allah's word. They said, yes. Is it true that Rasulullah recited it in the way that he did? They said, yes. Is it true that it's perfect and preserved and unchanged and it cures the world? And it's light and guidance and rahmah from Allah? They said, yes. She said, I don't want to meet Allah until I have it in my heart. SubhanAllah. The people around her, of course, it's a beautiful story, but the people around her are like, oh, you know, sister, <laughs> inshallah, you know, inshallah. Allah Ta'ala didn't take her soul that day. 
Allah Ta'ala took her soul six years later, a week after she finished Qur'an Al-Kareem. She memorized the entire book and then Allah Ta'ala called her back. SubhanAllah. You and I, sometimes we fall into the trap of thinking that Qur'an is meant for other people before, meant for someone else. The shaykh has it, it's enough for us to pray behind him and enjoy. No, no, no. The best hafil ever, Sayyidu Waladi Adam Ajma'in, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. When did he begin his journey with Qur'an? When? When he was 40 years old, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And did he finish it in one month? Six months? One year? 23 years. So don't ever lose that relationship with Qur'an. Don't ever leave Qur'an. Ramadan is coming to an end. Rasulullah informed us in the hadith in Bukhari that actions are judged by their ends. As Ramadan comes to a conclusion, promise Allah and promise yourself that you will keep some relationship with Qur'an alive. We've heard this book, Imam Shatri, maybe it shook us. Maybe it woke us up. What about the words of Rabbul Alameen? What impact should that have on my heart and yours? Promise Allah that after Ramadan leaves, that, that old you will never return. You've heard too much and I've heard too much about this book to leave it on the shelf for another year. Let us at least touch Qur'an. Can we do this? Inshallah. Let us look at the Qur'an. Can we do this? Inshallah. Let us read an ayah a day, a page a day, and let us promise Allah, Ya Allah, I don't want to meet you except that I bring some of your book. Allah Ta'ala Himself called it Qur'an al-Kareem, Qur'an al-Azim. Allah Ta'ala praised it and called it, called it by such beautiful names and was so proud of it. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa did the same. Sallallahu alayhi wa We claim to be proud of it. We claim it's a miracle. Now it's time for us to show that we truly believe that. Allah Ta'ala make us from people of Qur'an. Ameen. Allah Ta'ala accept from us all. Ameen. Ya Rabbi Alameen. Subhanak Allahumma bihamdik. Nashadu an la ilaha illa anta. Nastaghfiruka wa tubu ilayk. Allahumma salli wa sallim wa barik ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi jma'in. Wa akhiru da'wana anilhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.